her direct face even when she was turning to look at the slides. Okay, That's what we were experimenting, okay. uh, we'll experimenting try, with we'll yesterday. Try it over here. Yeah, yeah. See, and then even when he looked at the slide, you still see the front of him instead of oh, his back. Oh. Very good. I don't know. We were trying to narrow yesterday. You see it need to be a little bit more forward there. Okay, there we go. It's all right. I can change it. Okay, okay very good. Fine. Good morning. Yeah, we were just trying yeah. to play with it yesterday. <laughs> you're not, we're not quite ready for you to try it. I'm sorry. But I'm ready. <laughs> you can start just uh, chatting to the grand Well, I don't know why we're getting the feedback. Um, yep, we have, to, we have to actually mute this. So how do you guys are the <laughs> feel oh. about or? Oh, that's um, nice. um, the water access in Dakota with the oh, pipeline and all that. Doesn't... We don't have a position on that. Sorry. Oh, no, I'm just asking about when that ever affect us down on this side. No. No? Okay. Huh. We have a problem. Uh-oh. We have a problem with this thing again. This was what I was doing before. We, um, what did we do? It's just picking up too much. Yeah, it's got a problem. So um, let's uh, let's practice a little bit here. Where Brian, we're just gonna we're gonna okay. turn turn off that that mic. Uh, you want to turn off my mic? Yeah. Okay. There's no chance. And we're just gonna use the regular. Um, you guys at Granite Hills, we're gonna do a quick little test. Okay. Make sure we're just we're not at something wrong with the the speaker's mic. So if you can hear Brian okay in, on this test, let us know. Well, turn it on. Hang on. Just do it the regular mic. Yeah, she's going to email me the blanks. So I'll give me your email and I'll send it over okay. to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, and I'm my mic is on. Go ahead and try it again. Okay, turn it on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello. Hello. Uh, so we'll just go back to here. We'll get that muted. All right. Just talk a little bit, Brian. Testing. One, two, three. Can everybody hear me okay? Good. Can you guys put up? Yay! Okay. All Yay. both sides can see. Are you okay? Well, we'll go with that then. I'll try and enunciate this a little much. I'll take the moment. Okay. Yeah. And I'll send it over to you as soon as she sends it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So I'll, I'll do it. I'll do a uh, when we're ready. Have a quick, quick introduction for Brian, great friend. Used to uh, in the good old days be one of our students. Gone on to great things and now teaches our GIS classes here at the college. And so this is like proud Papa Day again. Yeah. 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 Have you back? So thanks, thank you, Brian. Glad and to be back. Over to you. Very good. I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about uh, what we do at Molly Water Agency and who we are, and how we use GIS. Um, if I can get the slide to change, it would be better. Hello? Is it on? Okay, mm -hmm. new technology. Try the pointer. I love technology, when it works. <laughs> okay, we'll just change slides for you. Okay, <laughs> next slide, please. First, a couple of things in defining terms. Um, certainly with my introduction to GIS uh, years ago, I didn't know what it was. And it's a real hard question to answer. What is GIS? Well, I can show you easier than I can tell you. Um, it's, it's very hard to answer in a clear manner. Um, it's a combination of hardware, software, data, people, and methods, all working together, um, in my case, to uh, manage a natural resource, our water supply. Next slide. Um, if you can imagine that I have at my disposal uh, a series of, of layers or transparencies, as it were, that I can overlay on geography, I can then begin to look at relationships between different factors that might help explain behavior and predict behavior of our water resource. Next slide. Um, GIS is all around us right now. Um, we're so bathed in it, and yet few people know it exists. 
which is fine, but uh, for today's purposes, we're gonna show you a little bit about uh, how it might touch your life and how we use it to manage a resource. Um, a typical day in the life. I found this a couple of years ago and, and have enjoyed using this series of slides. Um, your alarm goes off, you turn on the lights. Well, all your power is managed by geographic information systems. Um, when Edison tells you that your power is going to be out, how do they know which houses are going to, are going to be out when they shut the power down? Well, that has to do with them knowing exactly through their GIS system. Um, you make a pot of coffee. Well, the transportation to get the coffee there, um, agriculture is heavily steeped in, in geographic information systems right now. Um, so you stop to get gas and wind work. Um, GIS is heavily used in, um, uh, in oil exploration and in transportation and routing uh, uh, trucks to get gasoline where it needs to be with the shortest possible route using the least possible resources. Next slide. You drive to work. And I don't know about all of you, but I use uh, Waze or Google Maps often when I'm navigating in order to avoid traffic jams um, and let me know how long it's going to take me to get where I need to go. Um, say you go to the beach. Well, you can navigate with your, with your uh, smartphone or little old school now, but a navigator, and uh, get to the beach again in the least possible time. Um, you enjoy lunch at a restaurant you saw rated on Yelp. I personally use Yelp. I sort of have a love-hate relationship with it, but okay. Uh, but, but Yelp is GIS. It's a location in space. It has data about that location in space. And you benefit from that. Next slide. You stop at a food market. Um, you know, rhetorical question, because most of you can't answer. How many, uh, say for instance, Starbucks, how many, how many um, restaurants failed before the, the, the Great Depression we just had? Zero. Why? They use GIS and science to cite their restaurants. So it's, um, why don't we have a Trader Joe's in the high desert? Well, it has to do with GIS and demographics. We don't need the demographic profile. Yeah. It's, it has to do with median income and amount of people. So there you go. We're working on it. Oh, back up, back up. One slide. Well, that's all right. No, don't worry about it. No. There we go. <laughs> you know, uh, it talks about, uh, the last slide talks about your car being safe right where you left. Well, um, crime um, uh, stats are entered into GIS systems, and they're doing predictive modeling. I'm not sure how comfortable I am with predictive modeling, but that's all GIS based. And also, um, fire service is using GIS. Both of those fields are underused right now. We need more trained professionals in those careers to help those folks out. So you can see that, you know, in this hypothetical day in the life, GIS has touched your life in many, many different ways, and you never knew that it was there all along. Next slide. So, who is MWA, and how do we use GIS? And maybe, more importantly, why do we use GIS? MWA is one of 29 state water contractors. Um, we do have the California Aqueduct coming through our region here. We are one of 29 that are allowed to pump water out of the state water project to replenish our groundwater. We are in a region where groundwater is overdrafted, has been since the 1950s, and Mojave Water Agency since 1960 has been tasked with replacing water that has been withdrawn and not naturally replenished. We are here to balance the bank account of the water, so to speak. Can't withdraw more than you put in. Next slide. We manage about 4,900 square miles in San Bernardino County, which is 5,000 or 20,000 square miles. So we manage about a quarter of San Bernardino County. Six uh, incorporated cities, 45 water purveyors, and a population of almost half a million. 
right now it's population estimates to be about 470,000 for our service area. Pretty big. We don't think of our region as being big. We're big and we're getting bigger all the time. Poised to get bigger as well. Next slide. What do we do? Um, we fill the role as the stewards of water resources in our region. Um, we are paid through tax dollars. Thank you all. I never forget who I work with, or work for, rather. I work, I don't forget who I work with either. Um, but uh, everyone in the region, through their property taxes, pays my salary and allows us to do what we've got to do. Make sure your grandchildren have water. We are heavily based in GIS and science. We used a science-based uh, decision-making process. Um, we have invested heavily in GIS and data collection. Um, and, and we are a very transparent agency, which I'm very proud of. I would encourage you to visit our website at www.mojavewater.org um, to look and see more about what we do and about the data. Okay, as a staff, who are we? Our staff consists of geologists, engineers, planners, um, uh, I'm missing, you may have went too fast on the slide. Oh, back, back, there we go. Um, database managers, technicians, and chemists. Because why chemists, right? Well, we can have water to drink, but if it isn't suitable to drink, it doesn't do us any good. So we have to make sure the water is suitable to drink. And for what it's worth, anywhere you go where you're serving water in the state of California, the water is safe to drink. We have occasional hiccups, but for the most part, we have extremely safe tap water, despite what someone tells us. Next slide. How do we do it? We, um, we not only generate, but we contract for regional technical studies. We heavily monitor and sample. Um, we have four or five field staff out in the field all the time collecting data. Um, we preserve that data. We preserve reports. We try and find old reports. We make them available. Some of those are available on our website. Um, we account for our water supply. We take a mass knowledge approach, what comes in via nature and what comes in via uh, imported supply from the aqueduct versus what goes out in the form of our drinking water and irrigation water and industrial water. And we make that supply balance every year, year after year. Um, we produce long-term planning documents. One that we've recently completed uh, is an integrated regional water management plan, which looks out to 2060. So we are looking very far into the future because you can't make decisions about water and make things happen immediately. You have to plan. Okay, we are a data repository repository. 